topic, what tech investors want to see in a pitch deck. Now, I would like to start by uh, thanking Kaya, the CEO of Slidebean, and also my lab administrators, Anna Shu and Vinny Tu. Uh, without uh, these three, it wouldn't have been possible to make this presentation. Um, now, this presentation is largely based on the work by Jose Kaya Kayason, um, and I strongly recommend that you uh, both read his blog post about how to make a pitch deck for investors, and that you also watch his uh, YouTube video on how to make uh, startup pitch decks. Uh, they are very informative and are widely uh, watched and I think they hold a very high quality and when it comes to pitch decks there's absolutely no point in reinventing the wheel instead the important thing is to ensure that you follow the customs and established practices so what topics or slides are typically found in a pitch deck well, um, just like Kaya, I would divide it into three sections. The intro section, consisting of a cover slide, the problem description, the solution, and sometimes a product demo. Then the section on why we will make you rich, uh, which contains typically the market size, business model, competition, underlaying magic, and go to market plan and team. And then the wrap up containing the traction and milestones achieved uh, and the fundraising information. So what should actually be on your pitch deck? Well, um, slide beans have produced this overview where they have been looking at what several different uh, venture capitalists and famous accelerators and angel investors uh, would like to see on their pitch decks that are sent to them. So uh, what you can see that all of these have in common is the problem the solution or value proposition, the business model, the competition, the funding team, and the fundraising information. And then some of them also want to see additional information. Now with this, I want to stress that you have to modify your pitch deck depending on whom you send it to. And you should follow what the investors would like to see. Now, if this is what uh, different investors want, let's have a look at what has actually been included in the pitch decks of seven uh, quite famous companies, including also one more recent company monthly what have we actually found at the pitch decks of Airbnb, Uber, Facebook, Tesla, YouTube, Slidebean, and Monthly? Um, are you all familiar with these companies? Well, if not, let me briefly mention what they do. So Airbnb is a company uh, enabling people to host guests in their own apartment. So it's kind of a pair-to-pair -pair hotel service uh, and they are currently a unicorn their latest evaluate valuation was 18 billion us dollars that was however before covid 19 so i'm wondering what they are worth today then uber uh, that's a, a taxi service uh, where uh, private people can uh, offer taxi services to to anyone and you can uh, catch a new, an Uber using an app. So what they have done is actually that they have converted uh, physical travel into actually 
uh, travel of information and thereby manage to make it more in more much more efficient and uber uh, has uh, done an ipo then facebook well that's the large social network uh, which is uh, used in most countries but banned in some like china uh, founded by mark zuckerberg and has also ipo'd uh, tesla uh, so that's a company uh, run by Elon Musk, creating uh, electrical cars, and they have also IPO'd. Then we have YouTube, uh, which is a video sharing platform, uh, which is a part of Alphabet, the parent company of Google. Then we have Slidebean. Uh, which is a, a company that has uh, automated creation of, uh, of presentations and in particular is used a lot by uh, entrepreneurs to create pitch decks. And then we have Monthly, which is a, a fairly young company uh, offering uh, SaaS ops services, uh, meaning that uh, they provide a platform where you can get an overview of all your SaaS subscriptions. Now, um, worth noting here is that actually only monthly has a go-to-market plan and only Slidebean has a slide describing how to use funds and only Airbnb had a testimonial slide and then all the other slides are found at more than one company. Now, these main slides, uh, when it comes to the problem, the solution, uh, the market size, uh, the competition, the team, are found at most of these. Now, I assume that the reason for why actually some of these are missing is because um, it's a bit hard to get uh, pitch decks for companies. And uh, I have here been using pitch decks recreated by slide beans based on information that they have managed to get about the original pitch decks of these companies uh, used at some point during their journey. So, let us now move into the intro section. Now, to quote Kaya, this is where you present your case, your problem, your premise, and your proposed solution. Now, the key objective of this part is to capture the investor's attention. Because if you don't capture it here, well, as I said, I have gotten more than 50 pitch decks. Um, I actually, I tried to count them, but I realized it was too many to count them. Uh, that means uh, that for businesses that don't immediately seem very interesting, uh, you are unlikely to get a second chance. So you had better catch the, in, the attention immediately. Now, moving over to the cover slide, um, here you have the cover slide by six of these uh, seven companies that I have chosen to pick slides from. Um, what I think is worth noting is that you have the company logo clearly visible and you have a short description of what the company is doing. So for example, for Uber, next generation car service, for Airbnb, book rooms with locals rather than hotels. YouTube, broadcast yourself. Slidebean, presentations that design themselves. The Facebook, well, they chose instead to take a quote, which is very descriptive. Cases are, uh, classes are being skipped. Work is being ignored. Students are spending hours in front of the computer in utter fascination. The Facebook craze has swept through campus. And Tesla is the exception because they just have a picture. 
taken from a Tesla car, which says it all, doesn't it? Now, to provide you a little bit of background about these uh, six companies and the slide decks that I have included here, um, two of these slide decks are, as far as I know, originals. Uh, the Facebook uh, pitch deck from spring 2004, which was used before uh, Peter Thiel's famous $500,000 dollar in angel investment in the summer of 2004. Um, as far as I know, they actually didn't raise any money based on this pitch deck. Then we have the slide bean pitch deck from 2016 uh, used by them to raise an to me unknown amount of funds that year. And then the other ones are recreations done by slide bean. Uh, based on uh, information they have obtained of the original pitch deck. So for Uber, we have the summer and 2008 pitch deck. Uh, for Airbnb, the 2009 pitch deck used to raise half a million in 2009. And for YouTube, uh, the 2015 pitch deck uh, used to raise uh, 3.5 millions uh, in 2015. Um, I think this was actually when they became a part of Alphabet, if I remember correctly, or then it was just before that. Um, now, then for Tesla, it's the 2010 pitch deck. Now, let's move over to the problem. Um, when you start a company, there's two approaches you can take. You identify a problem and you set out to solve it, or you have a technology and you send out and you set out to find a problem that it can solve. Now, I myself um, have done both types of ventures. Uh, Lovisa Yibe, my first company, is an example of the first type. And Aukoti Abe is an example of the second type. Um, I would actually, in general, recommend that you start with the problem that you have identified, and then you find a solution, uh, because uh, you are more likely to succeed in that way. Uh, it's uh, often very hard, actually, uh, to find a good problem to solve uh, for a technology. So the market risk is more significant in that case. Now, the problem should be described clearly. So let's look at three examples. So for Airbnb, uh, they say, Price is an important concern for customer booking, travel online. Hotels leave you disconnected from the city and its culture. No easy way exists to book a room with a local or become a host. Uber described cabs in 2008 as most use aging and inefficient technology, radio dispatch using two-way communication and the most common car is the Ford Crown Victoria, which drives slowly. Hailing is done by hand or phone, no GPS coordination between client and driver, uh, significant far fare seeking or dead time for the drivers. Then slide bean, how long does it take you to build a slide presentation? Creating professional slide presentations is a time demanding process. PowerPoint alternative tools are equally inefficient with long learning curves and businesses resolved to using on-demand services which are manual and expensive. Now, the important thing here to quote Kaya is 
that you need to, this is where you present the status quo and creating empathy with your investors is the critical at this point. Now, moving over to the solution. So to quote Kaya again, the solution is quite obviously you and your company and your product. So here you should mention how you solve the problem that you just described. So slide bean, they describe the solution, a unique user interface plus algorithm that automatically redesigns user content, cloud-based indexable presentations that can be viewed and edited on any browser, automatic engagement tracking for each slide, ideal for sales pitch date decks. Then uh, Airbnb, they describe it as a web platform where users can rent out their space to host travelers, save money when traveling, make money when hosting, share culture, local connection to the city. Now to continue on the solution, when you create the solution slide, you should think of benefits instead of features, to quote Kaya, and you should avoid tech jargon because um, using tech jargon is impolite towards the reader that is actually probably not an expert in your field. And here you also have an additional example from monthly and from YouTube that I recommend that you look at yourself. Then uh, not all companies have a product demo, but if you have a product that is demonstrable, um, I think it is a promotion where a product is demonstrated to potential customers, to quote Kaya. Um, Depending on your product, you can either demonstrate it by some pictures of people using it, as Uber have done, or also add views from the app, or maybe a small video of how the app actually is being used. Now, uh, an example, uh, another example is is photos taken from inside the Tesla car describing its features. And then slide bean, they actually have a video demonstrating their service. And if you make um, a video, then uh, remember that your video demo should reach an aha moment in 30 seconds or less. Because again, most investors, they view a lot of pitch decks. So the time they can afford to spend is short. So you need to make them feel that, ah, I get it. And uh, to make a, a demo, a video demo is in particular useful if you send a pitch deck by email. I have had several companies send me um, links to YouTube videos of their product, and that has been very helpful. Now, moving over to the why we will make you rich section. If you manage to catch to make them rich, that's the whole purpose of this section. Now, I would like to ask, uh, how much time do I still have left? Yes, hang on. Uh, about 15, 15 minutes. 15 minutes, minutes. Yes. okay. Thank you. No worries. So, market size. Uh, this is where you look at how large can this company become. Um, so, the main purpose actually of this slide is to describe how large is the market today, how is it predicted to grow, because this 
kind of sets an upper limit on how large your company can become. Um, some um, startups, they want to then describe the, how large a market share they think they can get uh, by, for example, taking 1% of the total market or something like that. Um, I actually would advise, advise against that because it's a meaningless exercise to estimate uh, your market size in that way. Um, now, some investors, they don't even want this market size slide uh, because they themselves uh, will estimate it. Um, I, however, uh, would recommend that you in general include it um, because not all investors uh, know the market that you are within. And then this is a, a good way to catch, uh, again, the attention of investors uh, by having a, a market size that is so large that uh, people know that this can become a really significant venture. Because ultimately, the market size uh, determines how large the company can become and how much money investor can make through the company. Um, now, uh, let's take a look at three, um, oh, sorry, uh, three of these slides. Um, if we look at Airbnb, then they list that more than 2 billion trips are booked worldwide. And uh, 560 million budget and um, is the budget and online serviceable market and 84 million trips uh, with Airbnb had been made and their share of the market they estimated to be 15% of the available market at that time. Then uh, when it comes to the market size uh, for slide bean, then they estimate that graphical design services is 11 billion in the US and 56 billion worldwide. And then they list the growth rate year on year over the last five years. And actually the US market has been shrinking while the global one has been growing by 2% according to the data that they have from IBS world. Now, on this slide, uh, I would recommend that you also, as a footnote, put the source or how you estimated these numbers, because that tells a lot about uh, how reliable they are. Now, over to the business model. So this is where you should tell how the company will make a profit. And looking at Airbnb, well, their business model is simple. They take 10% commission on each transaction. Uh, that means that they, at that moment, had been earning $84 million and getting an average fee of 25 dollars. Um, and if we look at monthly, they charge a monthly description service charge, which is between 49 and 99 US dollars, depending on um, if you have a professional package or a standard subscription. And they also provide a free version that is intended to get users started with the service. And then they also have sponsored or affiliate content. Then slide bean, uh, their business model is based on a monthly subscription service uh, positioned initially at small businesses. So two to 10 employees and they charge then $29 per month and then they have some additional on-demand services available, including a service uh, where one of their professionals uh, make the pitch deck. 
Now over to competition. So if you have a product that stands far apart from your competitors, then this might be the best way to make sure everyone understands the premise, according to Kaya. What kind of premise? Um, if you can illustrate this uh, in, for, in some type of a map, where you pick the main characteristics where you stand out. Like for example, here for Airbnb, they have chosen price and then uh, uh, how the transaction is done as their metric. And there they are both affordable and the, the transaction is done online, which makes it convenient. And this is compared to, well, all the competitors, which are hotels and and different booking agencies for hotels in particular. Then if we look at slide bean, they have chosen as their metrics, uh, the quality of the design and how time consuming it is to create the slides. And this is where they stand out. They end up in the upper right quadrant with great design and it's generated automatically and fast. Well, then the alternatives, uh, Adobe Illustrator, for example, has great design, but it's very manual and time demanding. And they consider PowerPoint to be a bad design and very manual and time demanding. Then uh, I think we should move on. So then the underlying magic, this is where you elaborate on the technologies and patents you have developed to make your product or service unique, to quote Kaya again. So if we take uh, two companies that are very different, so slide beans, they have proprietary technology. Um, they have fully indexable slide content, which is what enables them to then do uh, the automatic optimization using uh, genetic algorithms, trying thousands of designs in a very short time unit. And then they have an HTML5 renderer on the client side, which is then unique software that they have. And then they also have integration with some other services, which they consider to be a competitive advantage. Then Airbnb, they list first to market, ease of use, uh, profiles of the hosts, uh, where one can list reviews, which builds trust, and the ability to list once and then be available all the time and then their design and brand and then the initiatives they provide to hosts to make money over one of their free competitors coach surfing. Then Uber on the other hand they have listed their technology the mobile phones with the intelligent scheduling algorithm that they have running in the background and then their payment utilization and reputation tracking of both drivers and customers. And then they have patent pending system designs. Now Uber today actually have a lot of patents on a lot of different uh, systems and IDs related even to autonomous self-driving uh, cars. Then the go-to-market plan so the go-to-market slide should refer to your plans to acquire a mass audience. And the point of this slide is providing that you can figure out ways to grow your business, both with a large pool of ideas and the ability to execute. Now, uh, depending on at what stage your business is, this will of course uh, look different. If you are in a very early stage, then this will com be completely hypothetical. Um, and in such a case, I would strongly recommend you to identify a beachhead vertical, which is a small, small part 
of the market that you think you will address in the future uh, that you can address already today either thanks to some connections that you have within that market uh, or thanks to it being local where you are located or thanks to the technology that you have. It sh the beachhead should be a market where you have ideally a 10x advantage over all the competitors and where you can quickly become the dominant player it doesn't need to be big enough to make your company profitable, but it needs to be a place where you can start, become dominant, and then from there, grow into other market segments. So um, if we look then at, for example, monthly, uh, they provide some, uh, go, uh, some uh, monthly stats uh, for slide B. Organic web visits, a customer acquisition cost of $60 and um, half a million organic video views. And then they say that slide B is uniquely positioned to market and promote this product as part of a suit of startup solutions. So it's an analysis that they did of slide B. And then they continue to say that uh, um, slide B, uh, no, sorry, that they have a, a unique advantage to position this product by leveraging our existing user base of half a million leads and 35,000 monthly signups. Um, on the go-to-market plan, uh, we, don't, we do not say we are doing direct sales or we will do online sales because that's not a go-to-market strategy. Uh, those are sales tactics. So uh, let's take a look at Uber. So they list some marketing ID, different uh, short teasers they could have, the one-click cab, the net jets of limos, cabs 2.0, possible slogans used for marketing, and then that uh, their aim is to become the ubiquitous premium cab service, and that they are planning to grow through an invite only referred from an existing member manner, Then over to the team slide. Well, to quote Kaya, this slide should be simple. Mention your founders and why are you the right people to grow this company. Do not talk about your advisors, first employees, or anyone who is not dedicated 100% to the company. So to take an example from YouTube, you have the three co-founders, Steve Chen, Chad Hurley, and Javred Karim. And under each of them listing some of their experiences and qualities that makes them together a winning team that can implement uh, the business successfully. Now over to the last part, the wrap up. And I would again like to ask how much time do I have? And the point of this part is to list the price of the stake in the winning horse that you are offering to the investor. So how much time do I have still? Uh, five minutes left, thank you. Okay, excellent. <clears throat> so traction milestones. Now, first, a piece of advice uh, regarding this traction slide. If you are pitching in front of an audience in a demo day type of event, this slide should probably go first, right up after your cover. Uh, this gives you credibility early on and captures people's attention for the rest of the pitch. 
I agree with Kaya on these points. Now, if you are not pitching and you are sending your pitch deck by email, then it should instead be one of the last slides because you want to leave the investor with the feeling that you are capable, you are making great progress and you are growing rapidly. And on this slide, you can, for example, list some events that show traction progress to date, or uh, you can, uh, for example, list a progress on a key metric for your business. Uh, it could be revenue, like here for slide bean, um, or it could be monthly growth uh, combined with both net revenue and subscriptions in terms of monthly recurring revenue. Then finally, the fundraising information. Now, first, a warning. In the US, the SEC has certain regulations as to whom can you show your financial data. So you should be careful when sending your deck to people who are, aren't accredited investors. Um, meaning that if you pitch on stage, you should probably not include this slide. But if you send it to an investor over email, then you are probably fine including it. And you should include it because you will get these questions if the investor is interested. And what you include here is simply the amount of fund you are looking for and the stake in the company you are selling for that. So if we, for example, look at the Airbnb slide here, so they are looking for 12 months financing to reach 80,000 transactions on air, bed, and breakfast. Uh, they just want to raise half a million in an angel round. And they count to be able to reach 2 million in revenue over the 12 months by using this money. Now, they didn't list how large the stake in the company the investors will get here. Ultimately, that's, of course, a discussion between you and the investor. Uh, but I think it's uh, good to provide what you would like to see it to be. But that, of course, requires uh, that you are able to come with a reasonable estimate based on other similar transactions. Duh. Also add a slide on how you are going to use the funds in some cases, if you want. Um, for example, it's a big difference if you are going to use it all on marketing to grow the market, or if you are going to use it to develop technology that um, determines the risk for the investor very largely. In the former case, it's market risk. Are you able to grow? And team risk probably that dominates. And in the later case, it's technical risk plus market risk plus team risk plus probably some other risks also, like, for example, infringing on other companies' technology and regulatory risk. Now, having completed this uh, walkthrough, of what you should include uh, in a pitch deck using examples from uh, famous companies. Uh, I would once again like to recommend you to see the startup pitch video by Kaya. And you have a link here to it. Now, uh, I would also like to mention that Slidebean, they have raised uh, 850,000 in their seed round. Now, finally, I would like to thank you for listening and all these inspiring companies uh, who have made the pitch decks uh, that I have taken slides from here, uh, in particular, Slidebean and Kaya, who have done most of the work.